I'm going to try to multiply uh, these. Today we are going to talk about inverses uh, and some pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so uh, 2 by 2. Uh, this one would be a 2 by 3. So the first thing we have to check before we multiply is can we do it? Yes, we can. The dimensions of the answer will be uh, 2 by 3. So I'm expecting the answer uh, to be a 2 by 3 matrix. So I've got kind of like, you know, 2 by 3. So those are where my answer is going to go here. And again, we're going to multiply the uh, row by column. So always the row in the first matrix, always the column in the second matrix. So if I want the top left, I'm going to do the top row and the left column. So first times first, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 0 times 5 is 0. So that first uh, top left-hand term would be negative 2. When I do top row, middle column, that'd be 3, because 1 times 3, plus 0 times anything is 0, so we get 3. And the last column, it would be uh, 1 times negative 4, so negative 4 plus 0 times anything, 0 times 7 is 0, so we get negative 4. Okay, let's do the uh, bottom row and first column here, so that would be 0 times anything is 0, so 0, plus 1 times 5 is 5, so that would be 5. And middle column, 0 times anything is 0, uh, plus 1 times negative 6, so negative 6, this one's pretty easy to do. And then 0 times negative 4 is 0, plus 1 times 7 is 7. And so we get our answer. I don't know if that surprised you or not, uh, but one thing you may notice if you're paying attention is, if, let me just kind of like erase some of this just so you can see it better. Does this matrix look familiar, right? That's, I guess, the question. Does this matrix look familiar at all? Is it pretty much exactly the same as that matrix? It is. It's the same matrix. So multiplying by this matrix right here is kind of like uh, when we do, you know, 5 times 1 or something, right? Or 6 times 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't really do anything. Multiplying by this guy right here, square matrix, has those 1s and zeros, doesn't really do anything, right? Just kind of, uh, you get the same answer you started with. Let's try this one, see if this one uh, works. First of all, like, does it even multiply? So this would be um, a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 3. So can we do it? Yes, we can. And the dimensions of the answer are going to be a 2 by 3. So we're going to have a 2 by 3 as our answer. So we're going to have like the matrix is going to look, have that kind of a look to it here. So the top row, I mean, when you do this, there's so many zeros here. You'll see what happens. Like it's going to be 1 plus 0 plus 0. This one's going to be 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0. Um, when you do this one, it's going to be 9. Only the first number makes a difference. Only the second number here makes a difference. Only the third number because all the rest are zeros. And so you end up with the same matrix here that you started with here. In other words, multiplying by this guy right here, it's kind of like multiplying by 1. Uh, so this has a name. It's called the uh, identity. And we're not going to multiply this out, but do a guess. Like this is going to be our answer, right? It's going to be that. This is called the identity matrix. It's always a square matrix. That's why it says n by n. Um, the, the main diagonals, you'll always see this pattern. The diagonals are always 1. All the other numbers are zeros. And it's the, the left top to bottom right diagonal that we're talking about here. All the ent other entries are that. So if I wanted to be like cool and label this, I could call this the I sub 4 matrix. I could call um, this one the I sub 2 identity matrix. I could call this one the I sub 3 identity matrix because those are the dimensions of the matrix. You don't have to know that name. You do have to know that, you know, this is the identity matrix and you'll see this um, in this section. We're doing inverses and identities have to do with inverses here. You'll see that in a second. So to test and see if um, if a matrix to test a potential inverse matrix. So first of all, it's got to be square, right? Um, if there exists an n by n matrix uh, where there's an inverse, um, if you multiply the matrix times, this is its inverse, so matrix times its inverse, 
or the inverse of a matrix times the matrix, you will get the identity matrix. So if you multiply two matrices and you get mysteriously the identity matrix, you have discovered that those two matrices are in fact inverses of each other. So that's one way to discover if two matrices are inverse. So these don't look like inverses necessarily, like they're both two by two though, they're square matrices, so they might be inverses of each other. So if we multiply them, let's see what we get uh, as our answer. So certainly two by two times a two by two, we're gonna get a two by two. So right away, I know, you know, we're gonna have, you know, that's gonna be what our answer is gonna look like. Okay, so let's do this. So we get um, four times three is 12 plus 11 times negative one is negative 11. So that first cell on the top left will be one. Well, that could be the identity matrix, let's see. Four times negative 11 over two is negative 44 over two, which is negative 22, I believe. Plus 11 times two is positive 22, which is zero. So far, it could be the identity matrix. Let's see. Two times three is six. Plus six times negative one is negative six. This is looking good. And let's do the last one. It's hard to do that, that fraction. So two times negative 11 over two is negative 22 over two, which is negative 11. And then six times two is 12. Negative 11 plus 12 is one. Guess what? This is the identity matrix, which means if this is matrix A, this is the inverse of A or vice versa. They're inverses of each other. Um, we've just proven that they are because the product is the identity matrix. Now we can actually find it. There's a formula for finding the inverse of a matrix. And so if you have matrix A, B, C, D, so if you start with that, it's just one over the determinant of that matrix times, and this is kind of weird, they, they kind of like, uh, they flipped around the A and D here. They changed that and they negated the B and C. They changed the sign of the B and C term and you multiply, and that's going to be the inverse. So we're just going to apply this formula right here. You can go right down in your notes to this problem. So it says uh, we're going to, the inverse of this one. So we're going to find uh, the inverse of this. I'm just going to write it this way. So the inverse of that is going to be 1 over the determinant. The determinant would be 4 times 6, if you remember how to do that from the previous lesson, minus 2 times 11. times according to the matrix we're going to flip around the four and six so this can be six and four we're going to negate or change the sign of the 11 and the two here and then we're going to try to multiply this out so this is one over let's see that's uh, 24 minus 22 which is two so one half times six negative 11 negative two and four and so if I do that, I get, uh, let's just multiply that out. So six times one half is three. Uh, you get negative 11 halves. Uh, you get negative one, I believe. Yeah. And you get two. And so we, I think the inverse, the, this matrix and this matrix are inverses of each other. In fact, if you look back at your notes, 4, 11, 2, 6, 4, 11, 2, 6, oh, like 3, negative 11 halves, negative 1, negative 2, 3, negative 11 halves, negative 1, and 2. Those are the matrix we just tested. They are, in fact, inverses. So we found the inverse of uh, the matrix using the formula uh, to find that inverse. So find the inverse of this one. So just make sure you know the formula. So uh, to find the inverse of this one, so I'm just writing it like that, so I know to find the inverse. So this is going to be 1 over the term, which is 3 times 9, minus uh, 7 times 4, times, I'm going to switch the 3 and the 9, I'm going to negate the 4 and negate the 7, I'm just changing the sign of those. So this would be uh, 27 minus 28, oh, that's just 1, so nice. Uh, so 1 times anything is just um, the answer is just 9, negative 4, negative 7, and 3. And this is what the inverse will be. Find the inverse of this one. 
Okay, so we're going to do 1 over the term, which is 2 times 6 minus 3 times 4. Right away, let's just simplify that. 1 over 12 minus 12 is 1 over 0, which is undefined. So here we're learning something. There is uh, no inverse here. So not all matrices, not even all square matrices, not the square matrices have an inverse, but not all square matrices have inverses. So uh, be careful of that. So there are some that just don't have an inverse, and this one doesn't have an inverse. Three by three is a little tougher. So this is what I'm going to uh, tell you on this one. So um, I'm going to go through the steps. You don't have to write these down. This will only be an extra credit question, but this will be an extra credit question on the test without a calculator. You have to fill all your work. And unlike a normal extra credit problem, I think I normally give about two points for extra credit question. I'm not going to give two. I'm not going to give four. I'm not going to give six. I'm not going to give eight. I'm going to give 10 whopping points on the test. So if you get this one extra credit problem right on the test, it'll be a different numbers, but it'll be a three by three, say find the inverse. Um, then I will give you 10 bonus points. But here's the thing. Everything has to be correct. So it has to be correct. So um, there's the first step, uh, find the minor of each element. Okay, so to do that, it's kind of a weird step here. So we're going to, um, you kind of like, okay, so let me kind of just give me kind of a template for, I'm going to have a nine, a three by three here, nine different cells in here. Sometimes I like just have that just so I can, I keep my work organized so you know kind of where I'm going. So we're going to find the minor of each element. Okay, so the min the way to find that top left-hand term is you, it's kind of weird. You kind of circle that. Essentially, you're crossing out row and column, and you're left with a two-by-two two kind of left over there. Find the determinant of that. So the determinant of that would be negative one times negative three is three minus one three minus one is two so that's the determinant of the leftover there now we're going to so hopefully you have a good eraser here uh, maybe you have to write those and i don't know what you're going to do here so the top middle is your at least mentally you don't have to cross them out you're at least mentally crossing out row and column that that term is in there's kind of like a two by two left over there so one times three one times negative three is negative three Minus two is negative five, so I get negative five. You have to be very careful about your math here. It's really easy to make a mistake. You get 10 bonus points if you get this right, though. That's the 110 on the test. You get a 90, it's now 100. 80 is now 90. Cheat. Okay, so this one, cross out row and column. You have a two by two left. One minus negative two is one plus two, which is three. Hopefully I do this right. Okay, so let's do this. So. This one, cross out row and column, you're left with a 2 by 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. In the case where the smart board really does help do this a little faster. Negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, I believe. Um, this one, row and column, so 2 minus negative 2 is like 2 plus 2, which is 4. Okay, um, this one is bottom left, so I'm crossing a row and column there. So negative 1 minus negative 2 is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. <laughs> I hope I don't make a mistake. It, it happens sometimes. Okay, so uh, row and column, 2 minus 2 is 0. Okay, got a 0 there. And we get negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Okay, so that's the first half, the first step. Then you find the cofactors. So the cofactor is a certain kind of uh, matrix. So what we're going to do is, like, if you think about those nine cells, um, I think this is true. So I'm doing this from memory. We'll see how this works out. So it doesn't mean these are all positive. What it does mean is this. It means, so 
the top middle term, the middle left and right terms, and the bottom middle terms. Those terms, I'm going to change the sign of whatever they were. I'm going to change the sign of them. So that's that's what this cove cofactor is all about. It's just changes the sign of certain terms. They start out positive, I'll make it negative. Okay, so here this term is going to be positive now. It was negative. This is now negative. This is now negative. Zero is still zero because it's not really positive or negative. All right, so I change the sign. So that's the end of the first step. So first we found the minor, doing that for each problem. Then we find the cofactor. We're done with the first step. Wow, okay. Second step. Transpose row and column. This actually, eh, it's not that bad. Okay, so we're going to kind of transpose that. So this step, uh, we're going to, every row becomes a column. Every column becomes a row. So the top row is 2, 5, 3. Now that, that'll be the first column, 2, 5, 3. The second row is negative 1, negative 10, negative 4. So that'll be my second column, negative 1, negative 10, negative 4. This isn't so bad. And then 1, 0, and negative 1. Okay. I think this might be the last step. Multiply the uh, that by the determinant of the, I'm going to say it this way, of the original original matrix here. So if you take this uh, original matrix and find its determinant by hand, again, you have to do this all uh, by hand. So let's find the determinant of this original here. So I am going to find the determinant of the original. Doing the, uh, you remember the diagonals method? So the diagonals method. So what that is, is you copy down the first two columns here. So 2, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, we're going to do diagonals here. So let's do those. Um, so we get uh, negative 2 times, that would be 3. Positive 3 times 2 is 6. Plus negative 2 plus positive 2 is 6. Uh, let's go the other direction here. So diagonals this way. So we get uh, 2, that'd be 4 times, that'd be negative 4 plus 2 plus, again, hopefully I do this all correctly, 3 uh, equals 5 plus negative 4 is positive 1. So I do the diagonals this way first. So 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, so that's the determinant of the original. So I'm going to multiply this matrix times 1 fifth times that, right? Because 1 over the determinant there is our method. So the answer should be, let's see if it is. Okay, so the answer should be, uh, two fifths, uh, five fifths, which is one, three fifths, negative one fifth, negative ten fifths, which is negative two, negative four fifths, uh, one fifth, zero times anything zero, and negative one fifth. So the only way on the test to check this, to see if you maybe did actually do this right, I have no idea right now, um, is you can take the original matrix, multiply it by this matrix by hand, by hand, and make sure you get the identity matrix. And that would give you the answer. I'm just gonna check it here because I have no idea if I did this right. So I'm gonna type in, this is not something you do on the test, uh, but I am gonna check it here. So I'm gonna do a three by three. So 2, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, and 2, 1, 3. And I'm going to find its inverse. 2, negative 1, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, and 2, 1, 3. Oops. 
this is um, whoops. So um, uh, so if you, if I had erased this little piece right here, I would see that that's actually a negative three. Uh, so when I typed into the calculator the first time, I did not put a negative in there. But I'm going to put a negative in there this time, and I get this is my answer. Let's double check and see if that works. So I just typed it in without the negative because that blue line was covering it up. Uh, you can make a mistake here. And one fifth negative one negative two zero three fifths negative four fifths negative one fifth. Uh, we did do it right in fact. So um, that is the correct answer. Again, if you do this correctly. Um, you can check it, and it, this can take a little time on the test, but again, 10 bonus points, is it worth it? Huh. Take a shot. It's always impressive um, if you can do that. So um, every year I have uh, quite a few students get it correct, and then I have the occasional student who get it, it almost correct, like all but one cell maybe is correct and gets no points. So be prepared that that can happen, but if you do get it correct, you get 10 bonus points. So that's uh, pretty good. Go to um, this one real quick. I really like this question. I want to make sure you do it. So try this. Um, which one has the minimum value here? So stop it. Make your guess. Um, the most common wrong answer here is this one. Um, minimum value, if you remember to our formulas, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This is our vertex form. So the minimum of parallel would be the vertex or h comma k. So right away I know the answer is going to be one of these guys because these are the only two in vertex form that would have the minimum. The minimum is the k value. We're looking for which one has the k value. What is the minimum of this function? You can see by multiplying these the y-intercept is negative 24. That means it crosses the y-axis at negative 24 somewhere down there, which means the minimum, the very smallest value, must be that or smaller, so the answer must be B. Um, you can also complete the square uh, to solve this, put this in the right form there. But um, oftentimes in this type of environment, so it doesn't say like which equivalent form. This is an equivalent form, so that's why it's so tempting. It is equivalent, but it doesn't show the minimum. The minimum of this function is negative 25. If you're able to use your calculator, you could you know graph this guy. Um, let's just see real quickly. I'm not sure if this is a calculator question uh, or not. Uh, but if it was, you could definitely graph it. So this would be uh, x plus 6 times uh, x minus 4. And if you kind of trace it here, so if you go uh, menu 5, 1, you see the y-intercept is negative 24. The lowest value there does look to be the minimum is negative negative 1, negative 25. So the very lowest point is at negative 25. That is the minimum of the graph, which is what the question asked for. So that would be another way to do it if it was a calculator question.